Hi, I'm Paul from West Country Wanderings. Welcome to Brixham part three. We're now in the uh, village of Galmpton, which is just outside the town center of Brixham. Sorry you meet me in appalling conditions today. It's my last chance of filming here today. Uh, so uh, sorry about the raindrops on the lens. Hope you can bear with me. The reason I'm standing here on Galmpton Common is because of this. And that there is a windmill, or rather the remnants of a windmill. They are very, very few uh, windmills uh, in this part of the southwest. Um, I know there is a similar one in Cornwall, just over the uh, Devon border, just outside uh, Plymouth uh, on the Mount Edgecombe Estates, one similar to this. Um, but uh, this one here is just outside the town of Brixham. So you meet me here on, it's actually called Galmpton Walborough Common. That is the main road going into Brixham on the other edge of the common. And we're going to have a look further down into the village and go down to Galmpton Quay, which is the site, the former site of a shipbuilding yard. We're now on Dartside Quay and behind me is the River Dart. This is the location where, if it was a clearer day, you would actually see the village of Ditsum, which some of you will be familiar with from my uh, one of my earlier vlogs. Going back up until as recent as the 1980s, this uh, site here was full of activity in terms of uh, shipbuilding. So why not uh, join me and we'll have a quick look around and uh, we'll have a look and see what else is here. It's very good here for wildlife. Sometimes you can see ospreys down here. Again, it's another site um, where there was much lime burning activity. There's a large lime kiln. Perhaps we'll have time to go and have a look at that. And there was extensive uh, quarrying over on the Waddington side, which is on the road towards Totnes. So currently on the map, we are over here. This is the road down from the village. And Waddington, which is where the quarrying took place, is over on this side. And then you've also got Mill Point, which leads on to Gompton Mill. Now I'm actually filming this vlog on rather an interesting day. And you're probably thinking, why haven't I waited for some better weather conditions? Um, well, the truth of the matter is, is that uh, today is the very, very last day that I'll be in Brixham. Yes, yeah, so last, today is the last day of uh, myself working in Brixham. In actual fact, uh, the guys and gals that work in the store where I work, they gave me a fantastic send-off. Um, one of the ladies that works there put on a brilliant spread, so thank you very much Jane, really, really much appreciated. Uh, made to feel very welcome. So that's the end of my 12 and a half years at that uh, particular company. So on to Pastures New, new job on Thursday, moving down to Cornwall on Tuesday. I'm feeling a real mixture of emotions at the moment. I'm excited about uh, the new things that are uh, coming up, um, in term, also in terms of uh, being in Cornwall, being able to film things in Cornwall and provide content for you guys on my channel. Um, obviously Cornwall is some, an area we've not covered as yet on the channel, so I'm looking forward to doing that. The new challenges of working with a new company, um, again it's retail and obviously there are some similarities with all types of retail. But um, obviously every company has a, a different way of working, so there'll be some new things to, to learn and some new people to, to meet along the way. But uh, that's one chapter of my life closed here in uh, South Devon um, in terms of work and living in this beautiful part of the world. Uh, but uh, moving on to an equally uh, attractive part of the world as well, as uh, hopefully I'll be able to share with you over the coming weeks and months.
Yeah, this was a hive of activity in the 17th, 18th century. They actually made uh, ships here for the Royal Navy and they'd be floated on a dart, uh, go across to Dartmouth or out at sea to one of the other ports, maybe Plymouth, maybe Portsmouth or perhaps further afield. Also some uh, merchant shipping was built here at Galmpton. So it's like got a bit of a, an industrial heritage as we see we've got the, uh, the lime kilns, we're going to have a look at that uh, shortly but it's still a beautiful part of the world despite the uh, atrocious conditions. It has actually eased off a little bit now but uh, it's still not ideal but as I say it's the last days and the last chance to uh, share this part of uh, Brixham which often gets uh, overlooked this corner of Brixham. Ah, the footpath that I'm walking on at the moment is actually called uh, the Greenway Way and uh, as the name suggests it leads on to uh, Agatha Christie or Stroke Sir Humphrey Repton firm or home at uh, Greenway House uh, which as you saw was on the opposite side of the bank to, uh, to Ditsum. So yeah it goes all the way round it actually joins up with the uh, John Musgrove Trail uh, that's the one we've picked up a couple of times when we were over at uh, Ditsum and also when I did the first vlog at uh, Brixham which is the walk down through the grove down to Churston Quay. Now interesting view on the opposite side of the bank here from uh, the uh, Galmpton Creek where the uh, boats are moored up and it looks like it's on a raised plinth. That's actually uh, Waddington Quarry and extends right back underneath those trees there. That was a limestone quarry hence the uh, the sheer number of limestone kiln, uh, sorry, lime kilns in this uh, part of Brixham. The dark side here at Galmpton is still very much a working little harbour. A lot of boats still being repaired and maintained and indeed some others being built. There's some workshops down towards the front of the image there. You can just see some of the roofs there. Um, that's uh, where boats are manufactured still. Obviously not to the scale that uh, used to take place here but still it's uh, engineering and work for the local economy and it's keeping the tradition alive. And at this location we're exactly halfway between Galton Village and Greenway House. Now just like we were when we were at um, Ditsum, this part of the footpath becomes tidal and it's low tide at the moment. And what do we have over there? Yes, it's another lime kiln, of course. Now the property being restored um, in front of the camera there, the one furthest away from the lens, uh, used to be a mill and this part of uh, the River Dart here is, is known as Mill Creek. There is uh, to the right of me, I can't show it because it is again private and it's secluded, um, there is a mill lake which presumably was used for storage of water higher up to drive the, uh, the water with. Now just on the other shore there of the, uh, this creek off the River Dart is a large boathouse. I will check but I believe that may be linked to the large estate at Waddington. Waddington's a hamlet on the back road between Brixham and Totnes. Um, the beautiful little hamlet with the very 
pink cottages. I've seen it on a couple of calendars, but uh, it's often not visited by anyone because it's quite tricky to get to. Um, yeah, I believe that's probably something to do with the house, which is uh, would be just beyond those trees on the right in the background of that image there. Um, very large uh, country estate. Interesting set of steps there. I think that was put in um, and where the star replaces it now to, for the footpath to gain access. Obviously that's overgrown and the footpaths move slightly further to the right there. Now how could I leave Brixham without visiting another lime kiln? Brixham and lime kilns are pretty much synonymous as we talked about the, uh, the limestone quarrying and the lime being slaked off as being an ingredient for the paint. Uh, industry which was in Brixham as we saw and also for fertilizing the uh, the fields hereabouts. In fact, this one this is actually one of the best preserved ones I've seen because it's got the flu preserved intact at the back. Now being in this lime kiln, um, got good acoustics as well, it's brilliant because it's out of the dry, uh, out of the wet shall I say, so I can stay nice and dry while I'm talking to you guys and gals. I'd just like to take this opportunity to thank all of my former colleagues, it sounds really strange saying that to camera now, uh, but yeah I'd like to thank all the former colleagues and the people that I worked with while I was uh, spent my time here in Brixham, I've got many happy uh, years memories of uh, working in this part of the world, so thank you all, I really do appreciate uh, your support, thanks very much. I'm just trying to think now how many lime kilns there are in Brixham, um, we have the two in the Grove, where was that valley walking down to Churston Cove. I know there's two over by where the university is, the um, Marine Research Laboratories, that makes four. There's one in New Road, close to the, uh, the former paintworks, making five. There's one a bit further up here in Galmpton. Uh, I drove past it coming to the where I parked my car. And this one, so that makes seven, I believe. Um, if anybody knows that there's any more in the Brixham area, please drop a comment below. Now it's starting to get a little bit more inclement again, so I'm gonna head back towards the car and then we're gonna go for a tour around the heart of the village itself here at Gompton. Now I've just come back up the hill from where we were at the lime kiln and noticed it has cleared a little bit. You have to appreciate the views a little bit more. You can just see on the far edge of the camera, that's the edge of the village of Ditsum. Yes, the views are clearing even a bit more now, so you can have a better view of uh, here at Dartside Marina and Boatyard. Now, if you do come exploring in this part of South Devon, something to tell you about in terms of names and parishes and borders is that there, there are actually two Galmptons. The Galmpton we're in currently is, uh, comes under Brixham. It's part of the town of Brixham, although it's like a, a suburb or a village on the outskirts of the, of the town itself, and therefore comes under Tor Bay. However, this is where it gets complicated. The bit I'm in at the moment of the village of Galmpton is actually in the South Hams. So the boatyard itself here on the shore of the River Dart comes under the South Hams and not Tor Bay. Now if you think that's uh, not complicated enough, <laughs> there's an added complication in that there's another village called Galmpton, uh, which isn't that far away. It's actually in the South Hams itself and is it's close to well it's kind of between Thurlston if you if you head to, down towards uh, the road between Kingsbridge and Salcombe and turn off right towards Hope Cove you'd actually go through Galmpton before you arrived at Hope Cove by the sea so uh, that's the tale of the two Galmptons. Now there is some evidence here of uh, Galmpton's previous shipbuilding heritage looking at the stanchion on anchor point points just on the quayside here. 
These were not built for the light leisure craft that are uh, being maintained and built here today. They're obviously for a lot more heavier shipping. You can actually see the pipe here, uh, I don't know whether that's an old outlet sewage pipe, it's no longer in use, but to the left of that there's two more stanchions which are sticking up through the, uh, the water there as well. There's more evidence in this area. Looks like another, possibly remnants of an old uh, pier or jetty which would have been used for uh, when the ships were built. And you can see various pins and anchor points in that and also some old bricks as well. Perhaps there was uh, a building to do with the um, shipyard at this point. Now come over here and there's a very really interesting sign and uh, it's got a word on it. I don't even know what it means. Um, if anyone does or has come across this before, the beach and fund us is private. No access or right of way exists to Bay Boat Construction Company Limited. Whether well, that's still in existence, but fund us. Hmm. It has cleared a bit, quite a bit more now, so you can see uh, Ditson very clearly. Don't know if you can make out the pink building on the opposite shore. That is the ferry boat inn. So now in the heart of the uh, village itself, I'm not sure what uh, that grating would have been for there. Maybe an old spring or something to do with tethering horses. I'm not sure, but it sits below this tall wall. And the top of that is an old red telephone box. This is Gompton's pub, the Manor Inn. very old building next to it which used to have a sign. I wonder what that was for. This road through the village takes you to the uh, again Riverside Village, Dark Riverside Village of Stoke Gabriel. And that house there has a sign saying it was the old post office. Now Gompton doesn't have a separate Church of England church but it has a couple of chapels the one in front the Flavel Chapel being one of them. That Churston Church will be the nearest church and we saw that in vlog number one on Brixham when I walked down to uh, Churston Cove. Now the Bow Village is uh, not far from Brixham itself it does still have a few facilities here there is a butcher's shop and the galleon stores complete with the post office as well. Great to see. And that's the road down to where we were earlier at Dartside Quay and uh, Gompton Creek. But this road carries, oh it's also appropriately called Kiln Road, um, no surprise why it's called that. <laughs> this road is the road, as I say, carries on to Stoke Gabriel. Stoke Gabriel is uh, well worth exploring as well and I, I haven't got time to explore it today unfortunately. And I think the entrance here to Gompton from the direction of Stoke Gabriel is an appropriate place to bring this vlog to a close. Yeah so this isn't just the end of the vlog on Gompton, it's also the end of West Country Wanderings Adventures in South Devon, at least for the time being. I hope you enjoyed the little tour of Galton, our third little tour of uh, places in and around the town of uh, Brixham in Torbay. And uh, so that wraps it up. I'm going to be uh, heading home now, back to uh, the other side of the River Dart near Dartmouth, help on the ferry, and I'll be uh, carrying on packing until I make my way down to Cornwall on Tuesday. So the next time that West Country Wanderings uploads a video it'll be somewhere in Cornwall. I'm conscious of the fact I have still very many areas to cover in South Devon, indeed the whole of Devon, 
Uh, so that won't be the end of uh, me covering places in Devon. There's loads in the South Hams I still would like to cover, like Bantham, Bigbury, and where I used to live in South Milton, uh, areas around Salcombe, uh, Mothercombe, uh, there's just so many. Um, so another time we will be back here, but West Country Wanderings will be back in Kurnow. Uh, I'm not sure which vlog I'm going to do yet. I've been doing some research over what areas to cover in Cornwall and some picking out some um, stories, some interesting stories and tales I'd like to share with you on the journeys in Cornwall. Uh, so hit the bell and um, it'll YouTube will uh, alert you to when the next one uploads. I will be trying to avoid the honey pots. So I won't be covering the main centres of uh, tourist attractions because they're going to be very busy, particularly with uh, limited access to foreign travel. There'll be uh, Devon and Cornwall will be very, very busy this uh, this summer. So it'll be the, the less obvious places I'll be covering, but uh, I think they'll be interesting nonetheless. So why not join me for those? In the meantime, I wish you all well. Please look after yourselves, take care of each other, and I hope to see you all again very, very soon. All the best for now. Cheers. Bye bye.